Hello everybody, welcome to RAW Online. I am Dr. Priyadarshini Shanmugam, Professor of Microbiology with more than 15 years of teaching experience for UG. Today we are going to talk about introduction to microbiology. What is the exact definition of microbiology? What are the branches of microbiology? What is the role of a clinical microbiologist? A little bit about the history of microbiology. And then as we are studying the history of microbiology, what the different scientists in the different time frames have done and they have contributed to microbiology. Initially, you should all be knowing that it was just a field, it was just a branch under pathology. But now microbiology has grown so much and it has diversified into so many subdivisions. So, it will be interesting to know about the history of microbiology and the role of the clinical microbiologist in the treatment and management of infectious diseases. So, exactly what is microbiology is, as the name suggests micro means small or microscopic, bios means life and logos means study. So, microbiology is the study of living organisms which are of microscopic size. That means you cannot see them under the naked eye or the unaided eye. You always need a microscope to study these organisms. And in microbiology, there are many types, but we will be concerned about medical microbiology, which deals with the study of causative agents of infectious diseases in humans, whether it is bacteria or viruses or fungi or parasites. And when we say the term clinical microbiology, it means the branch of microbiology which is involved in the prevention, the diagnosis as well as the treatment of infectious diseases. And why is medical microbiology so important? Because we all know that microbes or microorganisms can be enemies. Those are the ones that cause a lot of diseases, they cause suffering. They are called as the pathogenic bacteria or the microorganisms, not only bacteria but also viruses and all. You can have microbes which can be allies or friends. For example, you have the gut bacteria which is present in our large intestine and they are important for maintaining the proper balance in our human body and they also help to maintain the levels of vitamin K. They synthesize vitamin K in our body. Then you have certain microbes which are allies which help us to make food like curds and cheese and all the other dairy products. In addition to it, we have normal flora in various parts of the human body, not only the gut, but they are also present in the skin, okay, the oral cavity, the upper respiratory tract and all that. And so, they can be present in the human body without causing any problems. But sometimes when our immunity comes low, when we become immunocompromised or immunodeficient, these microorganisms can cause diseases. So, they can be opportunistic microorganisms in that case. So, you can have microorganisms which are friends, which can be enemies, which can be just living as part of the normal flora in our various organ systems and some of them are opportunistic bacteria, which are usually not causing disease in people who are healthy, whose immune status is normal, but they can produce disease in immunocompromised or immunodeficient individuals. And when we go on to medical microbiology, which has further diversified into the following branches, so you have bacteriology that you have general and systemic bacteriology, which involves the study of bacteria, the morphology of bacteria, the growth characteristics, what chemicals they are sensitive to, the temperatures they are sensitive to, okay, all that will come under the general bacteriology, mechanism of action of antibiotics and all that. And systemic bacteriology is system wise, what are the bacteria causing different infections like CVS infections, bacteremia, sepsis, endocarditis, respiratory tract infections. So, that is known as systemic bacteriology. Then there is a branch of microbiology which is known as mycology which deals with all the fungi, both the pathogenic fungi, the opportunistic fungi. Then parasitology, study of parasites, it can be protozoa as well as helminths. Protozoa are the single celled organisms like amoeba and helminths are all the worms. Virology is the study of viruses. Immunology is the study of our own body's immune system and how we defend our a body against the invasion by all these other pathogens. Applied microbiology is whatever is discussed under these headings will be a, a kind of system wise it will be put into this. Like for example, if you take a CVS or an RS, a CVS or a respiratory system, this applied microbiology is all the pathogens which affect the respiratory tract right from bacteria or viruses or fungi we will be dealing with it. You also deal about hospital acquired infections mechanism of action of antibiotics, the mechanism of resistance, 
So all that comes under applied microbiology and public health microbiology is more like control of the infection. So we not only diagnose, we also help to treat and then we also help to control the disease. So this under this you will have the general control measures and the specific control measures or profile access like your vaccines. In addition to it, not related to medical microbiology will be your other industrial microbiology, the agricultural microbiology, food and dairy and aquatic microbiology. Genetic engineering and recombinant DNA technology is another aspect of microbiology which is used in the molecular diagnosis of many infectious diseases right now and then we have biotechnology also. What are the branches of general microbiology? So, till now we saw what are the branches of medical microbiology and in medical microbiology general was one of the branches. Uh, in general microbiology, the different aspects which we will be seeing are microbial morphology, the structure and the function of the different the cell, the bacterial cell as well as the organelles which are present inside the cell, the physiology that is the growth, how it ob obtains its nutrition, okay, then the environmental factors which determine the uh, existence of this organism and all. The taxonomy is how we name the organism. Bacterial genetics is the study of how uh, the structure of the genetic material as well as how the genetic material gets transferred from one bacteria to another. Ecology, how it interacts with its environment and molecular biology is the part of general microbiology which is involved in the uh, devising of the molecular diagnostic kits, the various molecular diagnostic techniques and the one name which you will be commonly hearing now is PCR and RT-PCR with the onset of COVID uh, pandemic.